There is an item. On a body, on a bench, on a balcony, behind a locked door, behind an illusory wall, behind some boxes, in an alleyway, in the third level of Boletaria Castle. And none of this was in the original game. And after a solid week of theorizing, testing, and searching, we finally found the key to the door. If it wasn't for this online culture that games have now, I don't think this would have ever been put in the game. And, you know, if it wasn't for the cult following this game has, I don't think anyone would have ever found it. I'll reveal what's behind the door towards the end of this video. It's fitting to delay your gratification a little bit for the sake of this story. On the 14th of November, just a few days after the release of Demon's Souls, a user posted a video to Reddit. Does anyone know how to open this door in 1-3? It's new. People went wild. What if this door leads us to the 6th Archstone DLC? Wait, maybe it connects to the closed door in Bloodborne? No, don't be stupid. It's clearly hiding Elden Ring's gameplay trailer. At this stage, there were just infinite possibilities, until it was discovered that you could use photo mode in an adjacent laneway to peek over the balcony, revealing an item. And luckily, one of the five people who owned a PlayStation 5 was Distortion 2, one of my favorite speedrunners, and a big fat cheater. There's a glitch that exists where you can walk up into walls as they load into the game, and he abused this to navigate a path towards the item. But Bluepoint were one step ahead. They had anticipated players glitching through the map to get there, and they placed this invisible box around the area as this extra layer of protection for something like this. Distortion, if you're listening, you cheated not only the game, but yourself. With Bluepoint taunting us, the search continued. They'd put things like this in their remakes before. In Shadow of the Colossus, there was a secret door that required 79 coins to open, and something myself and many others came up with was to try and farm 79 gold coins from the fat officials to see if that did anything. Some poor soul on Reddit actually tried this to no avail. And theories kept flying, you know, what if it has something to do with the weird goat faces hidden in the credit screens? Actually, why is there a small chest here that's illuminated so curiously? Wait, what if it has to do with all of those weird audio glitches that some players have reported? Do the items on the steps in front of the door matter? Are they a clue? Is that a face in the bag? Can the solution only be seen with a certain filter on? Uh, what about fraction mode? What about Fractured Mode? Finally, a player named Maledictus Nix, playing in Fractured Mode, which flips the game horizontally, in pure white world tendency, found a new item. In the same stage as the locked door. It was hidden up a ladder, in a featureless dead end, under a box. A ceramic coin, made of dried clay. Extremely brittle and fragile, the glimmer has faded, much like its value. It's also a consumable item that recovers a tiny amount of HP. So, coins were back on the menu, but don't consume them for the health bonus, for the love of God. Instead, find more coins. People quickly speculated that these would only be discoverable in fractured mode and in pure white tendencies, hidden within breakable rubble, and they were right. We had an actual goal now, and filled with new determination, players began discovering coins left and right. Four more were found in pure white world tendency. In 1-3, in a featureless room off to the side of a courtyard. In 2-2, on an island down the lava river. In 3-1, past the human ball in one of those small locked cells under a chair. In 4-1, within the grave robber's cell. And then five more in pure black world tendencies. So in 1-2, up the stairs before the tower night, under a table by the winch. In 2-1, past the three dogs that are at the bottom of this ramp, tucked away in this dead-end lane within some boxes. In 3-1, on the right as you approach the fool's idol, back and before a fence. In 4-2, hidden within the pit that Patches kicks you down. And finally, in 5-2, before you fight the Dirty Colossus, up a ramp, in a room, in a box. So that made 10 coins, which was a really neat even number, and it even matched what looked to be the number 10 on the back of the coin. And when you traded them with Sparkly the Crow, she would react positively. But then she would just drop the items right back at you. Maybe we didn't have enough? At this point, it had been a long time since the last discovery, and people had been searching endlessly. How many more coins could there even be? Desperate now, some players tried duping the coins by trading them to other players and then rolling back their saves so that they would still have their coins. But 
Bluepoint had thought of that too. When picked up by other players, they become broken coins. They are ceramic after all, and they're very fragile, so when you drop them, they break. It's such a good thing that Bluepoint put so much effort into making sure that players can't cheat. Back at it then. So far, there did seem to be a pattern. Coins could only be found at each end of world's tendency, and there were two coins per world, except for in the fifth world, the Valley of Defilement. Here we had only found one coin, hidden in black world tendency, so for hours and hours, players scoured every inch of that goddamn swamp, until, finally, it was found by none other than Shrek himself. But it was a lie. Notorious Dark Souls Deviant, Metal Fruit, had found a coin elsewhere and then dropped it and picked it up again in the middle of the swamp, just to throw players off the scent. Many were not fooled by him and his accomplice, but for the truly desperate, precious time was wasted. Enthusiasm waning, the search continued, until hours later, the eleventh coin was found. But it wasn't found in the swamp. No, instead it was found in the first level of Boletaria Castle, in that room from which two soldiers burst after you rescue Estrava. This was the third coin found in Boletaria, so it shattered the theory that each world only had two coins, and the swamp was gratefully abandoned, as people filtered back into other worlds. While others searched, Distortion 2, that big cheater we mentioned earlier, he had a different idea. What if he was to go into New Game Plus and collect more coins there? Every New Game Plus cycle would net him 11 more coins, and on New Game Plus Plus, Distortion traded 30 coins with Sparkly the Crow, and it worked! He received a key covered in red rust. The mystery of the door was solved. At this point, I set out on my own journey to find all these coins. I wanted to get footage of my own for you guys, and I wanted to see what it was like going through three new game cycles just to collect them all. It wasn't fun. I will say though, while gold coins ended up being unrelated to the door, they're still kind of related. Uh, using them glitches your luck stat at the Maiden in Black, and with the Blue Blood Sword, I mean, you do decent damage. Wait, am I a cheater too? Even with this slightly overpowered weapon, a lot of things will still kill you in one hit. And it should still take you like 12 hours to go through this many New Game Plus cycles. But luckily, while I went through all of this, I had Audible to keep me sane. Consider visiting audible.com slash Vartividia or text Vartividia to 500, 500 to start your free one month trial. So you beat all the bosses, you make sure you always get rid of human form in the Nexus to make sure that you hit pure white world tendency in all worlds, and then you get all the white world tendency coins, then you farm stones of ephemeral eyes, then you die in human form in each world until you get them to black world tendency, then you get all the black tendency coins, then you go into New Game Plus and you do it again. You kill all the bosses, you kill yourself in the Nexus each time, you get permanently stuck in a wall on the way to Old Monk, you go to... Wait, what? I can't warp out of here. I can use items, but I can't use the warp item. And, yep, I'm being invaded by players who are becoming the Old Monk, so I can't even get someone to kill me here. And the cutscene is unskippable too. Oh, fuck. This is how it ends. Hours of tedious grinding, an entire character ruined stuck in a wall for all eternity. I'm not doing that again. Unless... Holy shit, it actually worked. You can just warp out from the menu. Thank God. So finally, I get the key. I open the door, I walk inside, and there it is. So I started to take some photos of my character looting the item. You know, I wanted to make sure I could get a good thumbnail for this video. Uh, looks good, right? That's a great shot. Photo mode is actually so good. Anyway, here I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna log out and I wanna keep the item there because I'm gonna come back later and take some more photos. You know, I'm not 100% convinced that I have a good thumbnail photo yet. Uh, so I log out, but I should probably check if it's still there. And it's gone. I'm probably the only fucking person who could come up with a reason to log out right in front of the item. But uh, yeah, it's the rarest item in the game because the percentage of players who will actually go through the difficulty of three new game cycles just to get this thing is going to be very low. And, you know, even when you do like me, there's no guarantee that it will wait there for you. I love Bluepoint for this remake, but... Goddamn, man. I don't know if I'm gonna have the dedication to make an entirely new character to go through all of this again. Anyway, later guys. 
unless... Hear me out. What if I take the rusted key into yet another New Game Plus cycle? It's actually very likely that the item would respawn, but what's unlikely is that the key would actually make it through to New Game Plus, because no other keys in Demon Souls actually act this way. And, you know, I would have to kill every boss again, so is it even worth it? Uh, but I eventually decide that, you know, it is worth a shot, and oh my god, the key is still there. So I quickly go through the game to get to the door. I kill an archdemon, I fight my way to the tower night fog, I get to the door, I unlock it, I walk inside, and... The Penetrator's armor set. A reward for surpassing impossible odds. The intricate design of this helmet was uniquely crafted for the Penetrator, one of the Boletarian heroes. Excellent for fending against piercing attacks, which, man, that extra defense is so useful in New Game Plus 3, let me tell you. Jokes aside, this is a good reward. Penetrator has a very signature armor set, actually to the point where, in the original game, players always wondered why this wasn't an item that you could get, so to add it back here and to come up with this whole challenge is thoughtful, it's meaningful, and I also just love that Bluepoint incentivized breaking the rubble in Souls games for once. As a Zelda fan, that's something I always thought this games could do more of. So, Bluepoint, well played. Umbasa. But you know what? It's actually possible that we haven't found all of the ceramic coins yet. People kind of stopped searching as soon as the armor was discovered, but we figured out you actually need 26 coins to get the key, and we currently have 11. So. If we get two more coins, that makes 13 per New Game Plus cycle, meaning you could get the armor in New Game Plus, not New Game Plus Plus, which would actually be so much faster than what you have to go through now. So listen, if you can find a PlayStation 5 in the real world, how hard could it be to find these last two coins, right? So if you have a PlayStation 5, get out there and try to claim one in your name. There might be more. But congratulations to everyone with a PS5 that joined the hunt, and congratulations to those without it too, honestly, because a lot of you guys contributed your theories and your ideas. I wanted to make this video to mark an interesting point in Soul's history, and I wanted to help everyone who didn't know about this feel a little bit of what it was like at the time. So, thank you for watching. And thank you to Audible, honestly, who kept me sane with this sponsorship while I spent 12 hours hunting for coins. While I did this, I listened to one of my favorite fantasy books. It's called Sword in the Storm, and it's an audiobook that you can listen to for free during your 30-day Audible trial. While you listen to this sample, go and visit audible.com slash vartividya or text vartividya to 500-500 to start your free trial. Here's an excerpt from the first chapter. Come and join us, Conovar. Let us talk of a new peace. Demon Blade stood silently for a moment, his strong hands resting on the pommel of his sword, his patchwork cloak billowing in the breeze. You have not asked me here to talk, he said, his voice deep and powerful. You have asked me here to die. Come then, traitors. I am here. And I am alone. Slowly, they drew their swords. I could feel their fear. Then, as the sun fell in crimson fire, they attacked. I think it's really important for a healthy mind to listen to one audiobook a month, and being an Audible subscriber gives you one free audiobook credit every month, so it kind of works out perfectly. If you're especially keen, you might also be interested in Audible Plus, which grants you unlimited access to thousands of select originals, audiobooks, and podcasts at $4.95 a month for the first six months. This is actually a special offer, available only for a limited time. But I'm always happy to take on Audible as a sponsor, because this is actually a service that I do use in my daily life, and I'm excited to just talk about my favorite stories with you all. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time.